Hey guys, Buffy Game Back today, beginning our video, and today we'll be covering the Psychov conversion into the APB, which is different from the APS, which we covered the other day. The APB meaning Automatic Silence Pistol or of the Macheski Pistolette Bishimini. So we'll go ahead and jump into this. I'll show you how to convert this weapon, and then we'll jump into some gameplay, look at the recoil, as well as see how it handles in game against bots with both the 20 round and the 80 round drum bag. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So here is our APB, or the Adama Chesky Pistolete Bishop Mini. So again, this is different from the APS, which we covered yesterday, for a, a few different attachments here, which we'll get into. So first off, if you don't know how to unlock this, what we'll do is back out to the main multiplayer menu, and we'll go to our loadouts quickly, and look at our pistols and see the unlock criteria. So same as we covered the other day, you need to get four kills while using pistols in five different matches. So... Four kills with a pistol in one single match over the course of five matches. So four kills, one match, five times with pistols. You'll be able to unlock this, and then you can start converting it. So, again, this is added at the last part here of Season 2 of Call of Duty Cold War integration into Warzone. Again, this is a Modern Warfare-specific weapon. So let's go ahead and jump back into our custom game here. And we'll go into our loadouts, and we'll go ahead and look at the APB pistol. So... What I'll do is first off go ahead and strip this down to base. So here is the base Sykov or the Makarov PM as it's known in real life. So first off we're going to go ahead and put on a suppressor for this because it is a upgraded version of the APS pistol which we covered the other day in the conversion series. So it's an upgraded version basically just made to take silencers and has some other different configurations with the barrel lengths as well as the muzzle velocity for the weapon. So we'll go ahead and put on the monolithic suppressor. This is going to be as close to the, the length and configuration of the real life version that I could find in game here. This is going to give us the sound suppression and damage range as pros, the cons being the aim down sight speed and the aim walking steadiness. So we'll go ahead and put on the mono suppressor. Next up for the barrel, another key attachment, same with the APS, you're going to want the 140 millimeter auto barrel. So this is going to convert the weapon from single fire into fully automatic. So you'll obviously increase your fire rate as well as lock the weapon in full auto. So you cannot select fire while using this barrel. Cons are going to be the recoil control and the hip fire accuracy. So we'll go ahead and select that. Next up, we'll skip the laser as well as the optics since this is a pistol from the 19, early 1970s. So we wouldn't really need any of those attachments given the time period. The stock option is a key one here. We're going to go with the PP Skelet. So this is essentially just a skeleton stock for the weapon. Now the APS conversion we did yesterday used the wooden fixed stock option. This one is the metal wire skeleton stock option this is going to also assist with the same pros and cons here just different stats not quite as effective uh as the skeleton as the wooden stock was but the skeleton stock here going to give us the same pros and cons being recoil control aim walking steadiness and the aiming stability the cons here are going to be the aim down sight speed as well as the aim walking movement speed so we'll go ahead and select that next up we'll go ahead and skip the perk in the rear grip we're going to want the VLK Alita, and this is going to give us the recoil control over the weapon. So it's the same as the rubberized grip tape, cons being the aiming stability. Now, obviously, because we're going full auto with this, we want a little bit of additional help if we can with the recoil control to keep us on target. So we'll go ahead and use this grip option. Next up for the final attachment here, the fifth and final, for the ammunition, we're going to want the 20-round magazine attachment for this. Now, in real life, the APS as well as the APB used a... 20 round magazine of the 9x18 Makarov round. So obviously we're going to increase our magazine capacity. I believe it's from a base of 7 up to 20. And the cons being the ADS speed and the movement speed. So we'll go ahead and select that. And this is our final design for the APB of the Macheski Pitalete Bishumini. And here it is. Now some interesting things compared to, obviously, if I go ahead and back out and we'll just really quickly take a look at the the base APS that I did uh, the other day. So really quickly, just so you guys can see the differences between these, I'll go ahead and build the APS the same as we did for the conversion video uh, the other day with that wooden stock option and then with the 20 round magazine. And that's really aesthetically or cosmetic purposes all there is there. So again, here's the APS on the bottom and then here's the APB. You can see some, some cosmetic differences there. Obviously, we're going with the the black grip with that recoil control option there for the VLK Alita, as well as the stock option. So this skeleton stock option, again, lighter weight, 
not used as a carrying holster for the pistol like the wooden stock option was for the APS. So on the APS, what you could do is you could unmount the stock option and store the pistol in this bottom here. You see this hole in the stock option. The pistol could be stored in there as a carrying holster, essentially. So you cannot do that with the APB, obviously, because it's a wire stock. However, what you could do is the suppressor was detachable. So you could, when you're not using the suppressor, you could store the suppressor here in the skeleton stock. So it would just, it would clip right in there and be fixed on the back of the stock there. You could still use the pistol that way and then use the suppressor when you needed to. Also, same as the APS, the stock option was fixed to the weapon the exact same way using that T hook there. So you can see it would fix right in there. If we go ahead quickly and take this off, you can see the groove there. So we just slide right in there and lock in place right up there under behind the magazine. So we'll go ahead and select that, put that back on. Another thing to note with the weapon is that in real life, the the barrel or the the top of the receiver wasn't as long as the as the uh, whole barrel was. So if I deselect this, what you would have is whoops, we'll deselect, we'll select this, and we want to deselect the suppressor quickly. So what we would do is actually the the thread the, the thread for the suppressor would protrude further in real life. And so again, it would extend the length of the weapon and that's where your thread would be to mount your suppressor on the weapon as well there. So other than that, it's basically the same. There are some minor differences that we'll get into, but cosmetically, that's really it. Also in real life, this 20 round magazine did not protrude like this. It, it fit in there perfectly like you would expect if we were to look at the base magazine. This is how it really looked right here. The, the magazine did not protrude like that. So essentially, this is really our APB APS pistol here. However, the 20 round magazine is needed because that is what came with the weapon. It was a double stack magazine and it fit right in there without protruding. Other than that, the weapon is the same. You have your select fire switches. In real life, it was select fire. So you can see that above the, uh, right in front of the hammer there on top of the pistol grip. And then you have your uh, receiver release there as well. So that is the final design for the APB pistol. Now, really quick, I cannot put any camouflage on this, unfortunately. So you can't really see what that looks like. And we're not utilizing a reticle, but again, I think it covers, I've seen obviously some attachments in Warzone uh, with camos, and it looks like it covers just about everything but the suppressor, depending on which one you're using. So go ahead now and jump into the gameplay of this weapon. Again, we're just using this here in a custom game against bots on Crash, and obviously we are Spetsnaz Operator Bale utilizing, we have our AK-74M series, as well as here our APB pistol. So you see with the recoil control, Honestly, it, it's a lot easier, and it maybe because I'm using the grip tape on there, but the recoil is, is much less than what we covered with the APS the other day. At least I noticed it's much less. Typically with the APS, it went up and to the right pretty heavily. The first recoil here that you're going to see, I'm not controlling it versus the second where I am. And you can see it, it really just goes straight vertical. And then the second control, second control fire here, I'm able to just keep that cluster nice and tight. Really very little mu muzzle climb with the weapon. Given, however, it is a 9x18 macro of round, so it is a smaller caliber than a 9x19 Parabellum. So you wouldn't expect very heavy recoil on this weapon to begin with, and obviously that fixed wire skeleton stock there would obviously compensate for that quite a bit as well in real life. So some changes to the weapon. Again, this weapon, the APS, like we covered the other day, was in service in the early 1950s. So it, is, it served from 1951 through 58 is when it was produced, the APS. And here with the APB, the second iteration or the enhanced iteration of the APS, the APB was in service and produced, or at least it was produced from 1972 to 1973. So what they did with this is they just optimized it to fit the silencers in the 1970s and really what this was used by Spetsnaz units as well as uh, sober units and things like that. Even into today, it's, it's still utilized. Um, so in, again, in the 1970s, this came back around. It was officially adopted in 1972 under the service name of the APB and given the growl index of the AP-13. So the pro approximately 2,000 APS pistols, which are the ones with the wooden fixed or the wooden stock option there, were converted into the APB, which allowed them to take suppressors. And obviously, they swapped out the wooden stock with the skeleton one, which again, it was completely detachable, so that wasn't very hard. They made the minor enhancements to allow it to fit the suppressor, which would include the the thread for the muzzle as well. Other than that, it's very similar to the same pistol. The muzzle velocity was reportedly dropped from nine, 
drop to 900 or 290 meters per second, excuse me, with the ATB variant versus the APS, which has a little bit faster muzzle velocity on the weapon overall. Now, like I said, instead of the wooden stock holster with the APS, you could fit your pistol into that wooden stock for, for basically a carrying case or a holster. The APB came with that detachable wire stock, which you could not carry your pistol in, obviously, but you could detach your silencer from the weapon and it would lock right into that, into the middle grooves of the steel skeleton stock. Now, also, like I said, a lot of specimens used this in the Soviet-Afghan war, and they would use this as a secondary, typically on sling, with the stock option and the suppressor fixed on the weapon. And they would utilize this as a secondary. It was utilized by elite specimens forces, even artillery crews and heavy gunner crews also use this. And then also, even up to today, it's still used by other forces like sober units, who are essentially uh, basically the SWAT team of Russia for the most part, but with more military training. So they deal with ma mainly domestic terrorist threats, and they would use this too, and they still use it today. So a little bit cleaner version of the APS pistol, a little bit more modernized to come back around and uh, be used. It's not as bulky as the APS, which had that bigger wooden stock there. However, it was neat that you could store the pistol in that wooden stock option. Now, like I said, the muzzle velocity for the weapon was actually lowered to 290 meters per second with the APB versus the APS, which actually had a muzzle velocity of 340 meters per second. So you're, they dropped it a total of 50 meters per second, given the barrel configurations, putting the threat on there and attaching a suppressor obviously will do that as well. So you're slowing down the muzzle velocity of the weapon. Other than that, fire rate Everything else still remains the same to my knowledge with the APB pistol. So let me know down below what you guys think of this weapon. Have you unlocked it yet? Obviously, it seems like the community is pretty, pretty uh, on the same page here as to the fact that the weapon is very overpowered, especially the fact that you can have dual Kimbos. And it is, it's funny because it is a 9x18 macro of round. So it's a small pistol round. It, I feel it, they really need to reduce the damage and probably increase the bullet spread, specifically with the akimbos. But I think reducing the damage, uh, especially at the ranges, needs to definitely be a thing because it is a smaller 9x18 round. Damage drop-off should be pretty significant for in-game purposes to hopefully balance it. So we'll have to see what they do with Season 3 going forward. Let me know what you guys think down below. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps out smaller channels like myself. And I really appreciate that support. I will be changing up my live stream schedule a little bit going forward. So I'll keep that announced. We won't be doing a live stream tonight. However, uh, we'll pick up with a few more later on this week. And I'll have a, a more firm stream schedule going forward here as well. Mainly over on Twitch right now for stream purposes uh, to keep it, everything separate from the YouTube algorithm. So it helps me out a little bit there just to stream over on Twitch. Let me know down below what you guys think of this pistol though. I'm really eager to hear your thoughts as well as when are we going to get the round machine gun as well as the scorpion or the cx9 i believe it's called in game scorpion evo 3 in real life so the round machine gun or the sig lmg as well as the scorpion evo 3 should be a lot of fun to see hopefully those come here in the beginning of season three since then we haven't seen them this last this is going to be the last few days here of season two and on verdansk apparently the current version of verdansk so maybe we'll be getting those weapons at the very start of season three along with whatever the new weapons are for cold war here in season three we'll have to wait and see nothing confirmed yet i expect a roadmap probably tomorrow being tomorrow being monday i, I would anticipate we get it since the season itself i believe does end on the 21st or the 22nd so wednesday or thursday of this week we're going to have a big shift let me know what you think is going to happen, what the weapons are for Season 3. Also, I have a pretty awesome video project that I'm working on. I should have that out Monday or Tuesday here to fit along with the last few days here on the current version of our dance that we know of. So be sure to uh, subscribe and hit that bell if you want to get notified for that. It's a, it's a quite a project, so I'm, I'm really eager to show it to you guys. I've been working on it. Uh, all day today, so it should be a good one. Really excited to show that to you guys. Let me know down below what you guys think. This is the APB pistol again the enhanced version of the APS APB standing for automatic silence pistol also in Russian the automatchesky pistolete bishimini so let me know down below what you guys think till next time buffer gaming out